right. I'll do my best, but it's not going to be easy. Yes, I know I am. Just leave it with me and I'll get down there as soon as I can. Oh, thank you for ringing. Bye. Who's that? That's my brother-in-law, well, ex-brother-in-law. He wants me to go down to Briars Hill. He thinks his daughter might have got herself into a bit of trouble down there. Briars Hill? Where's that? Well, he says it's about an hour away. He can't go himself. He works abroad. It's very difficult. I mean, I can't just go running down there. But he did seem very worried about it. He said, just tell her to stop doing whatever it is she's doing. Anyway, how did you get on? Ah, oh, terrific day. Good shoot, smashing light. Car's running well, and I got paid. None of that. There's a check in the post. It was cash on the nail. Dinner is on me, and my date is bringing a friend. Ah. Car's running well, is it? Yeah. You never told me you were an uncle. Well, uncle-in-law, really. But with beautiful nieces. Oh, yeah, nice girls. Nice. Joanna's the eldest, then Chris. Send me handkerchiefs over Christmas. Without fail. Oh, yeah, this, this must be it. Can't wait. Joanna, it's Guy Lofthouse. It's your Uncle Guy. Oh, come in. Oh, hello, Chris. This is a surprise. This is uh, Guy McFadden. He drove me down. Joanna's sister, Christine. Come in. Sorry to burst in on you like this, but your father rang and asked me to look you up and... See how Joy is and all that. Joe didn't come home last night. Joe's dead. They found her this morning. Well, perhaps I should. She was on the railway line. They said she did it. It's not true. It can't be true. She was murdered by Eric Waterfield. They want me to go to the mob to identify her. Oh, Uncle Guy, thank God you're here. Yes. Detective Chief Inspector Stanard, Bryce Hill, CID. We spoke on the phone. Yes. We just need a formal identification. Who are these gentlemen? This is my uncle. You don't mind if they come along too? I was wondering, could I see the pathologist's report? Why? Because we don't actually believe that it was suicide. The inquest will decide that. Well, we certainly hope so. If you have any information concerning Miss Draper's death, let's have it. But I'm not going to show you the pathologist's report. But why? Because it's confidential, that's why. It will be required at the inquest, of course. What inquest? Miss Draper, sir. Superintendent Masters. Come into my office, please. So, you think she might have been murdered? Darling Chris, I was wrong. It was a wild goose chase. 
I've apologized to E and handed in my notice. I'll never get another job. Joanna, you've already confirmed that's your sister's writing. Yes, but I think she was forced to write it. Well, it's possible, I suppose. Who's E? Eric Waterfield. Joe was his secretary. The estate agent. I know him. He saw me in my house. Okay, let's assume she wrote this under duress and that somebody pushed her off the bridge onto the railway line. How did he get her there? He'd have had to have got her drunk or drugged her. But the pathologist found no trace. I'll see for yourself. What about the burn marks on both temples? I asked him about that. He said her head must have hit the live rail. Joanna. She signed that note, Joanna. So? I always called her Jo. Well, I wonder if she did that deliberately. I think she did. Um, what exactly did she tell you about Waterfield? He was crooked. In what way? There was something shady to do with Peregrine Hall. What's that? It's a big house at about two miles out. She said there was something phony to do with the sale of it. It belonged to an old lady called Mrs. Osgood. First it was sold, then it wasn't, then again it was. Still, it's been empty for some time, and Joe believed there were squatters living there. It doesn't sound much, does it? Uh, listen, I think I'm going to stay down here for a few days. Sure. There's a bell not far from here. Right, thank you very much. And I'll, uh, I'll see you later. All right. I'm afraid we only have one room left, sir. A double? Yes. Well, we'll take that one, then. Right. If you and your wife will sign the register... No, she's not my wife. I mean, she won't be staying. I'm sharing with another chap. Name's Lofthouse. You tell him I'll be out for dinner. Thanks. We're looking for properties with development potential. Uh, for one thing, we want a large house that we can turn into a conference centre with plenty of land and preferably with planning permission. Um, we have several properties which might interest you. When would you like to do? Well, there's no time like the present. Fine. Mr. Waterfield. Um, Mr. Lofthouse, sir. Hello. Hello. From Harrogate. His company are looking for investment opportunities in the area. Well, Miss Treasure will look after you, Mr. Lofthouse. If you see anything you fancy, come and have a chat. The prices aren't set in concrete. Thank you. Oh, shall we? Certainly. Three messages for you, Mr. Waterfield. Well, what do you think? Oh, it's too small, really. What else have you got? We haven't anything bigger than this at the moment. I can certainly keep an eye out for you. What about Peregrine Hall? Yes, I know the place, but it's not on our books. Oh, it was on your books. Are you sure? I spoke to a friend of mine a few weeks ago, someone from this area, who suggested Peregrine Hall. It's all in your office. And I spoke to her, Miss Draper. Oh. She said she remembered being given instructions for the sale, but she wasn't sure whether it was still on the market. Perhaps the owner instructed several agents, and someone else made the sale. Perhaps you could check it with Miss Draper. I'm afraid not. She's just died. Died? Yes. It was a terrible tragedy. We're still suffering from shock. That's awful. I'm sorry. She, she sounded so cheerful on the phone. Yes. One would never have guessed she'd take it so hard. She had to keep it all bottled up. We all knew, of course. Knew what? Oh, I think I've said enough, Mr. Lofthouse. Oh, you mean Mr. Waterfield had given her the sack? I mean, Mr. Waterfield had ended their relationship. Dear Mrs. Carraway, having taken counsel's opinion, I have to advise you that your nuisance claim has little chance of success. I suggest that before involving yourself in costly litigation, you complain to the Environmental Health Authority. Yours sincerely, etc. Well, that's the lot, Christine. Are you sure you wouldn't like to take a week or so off? 
Thank you, Mr. Pike, but I'd rather be occupied. Yes, I do see. How did it go this morning? I hope it wasn't too much of an ordeal. No, but I'm glad it's over. You'll uh, let me know about the funeral. My wife and I would like to send some flowers. That's very kind of you, Mr. Pike. Room 14, Mr. Lofthouse. Oh, did uh, Mr. McFadden leave a message saying what time he'd be back? No, he just said he'd be eating out tonight. It's awful. Joe's things lying everywhere. You were very close. Yes. Mum died years ago and Dad works abroad. So we just had each other. Now I've got no one. Well, I do. I don't see why you should want to help. Someone you've only just met. Well, I'm that sort of a chap. I like to help old ladies across the road, even when they don't want to go. <laughs> hey, it's supposed to be a joke. I'm sorry. It's just I've felt so alone. And suddenly you and Uncle Guy turn up. I'm very grateful. Look, these um, other people, Joe, Sedbury and Paul, did she ever mention their name? No. Can you remember anything else? Anything at all? Only this business with the house. Peregrine Hall. I really think this is a total waste of time. No, it isn't. The place is obviously empty. You see? Joanna was right. She told Christine there was what is here. So where are they now? Champagne like that. Why don't they stay in a hotel? Exactly. The fax here. For someone called Ducler from a Mr. Verschbinden. Oh, come on, squatters. With a fax machine and all this champagne. Attempted burglary and trespass. You're under arrest. McFadgen and Lofthouse. Sounds like a variety act. Just what they are, a couple of clowns. They tricked the alarm. Any form? No. Does the owner want to prosecute? It's owned by some property company. Do you want me to chase them up? You reckon they're harmless? Oh, yes. Not worth the paperwork, though. Give them a bollocking, let them go. from the bank this morning. Joe had them put into the bank for safekeeping. Listen, why didn't you tell me about Joe having an affair with Eric Waterfield? Because it was over. It's been over for months. It makes a difference to your sister's suicide, Ned. I thought you were supposed to be on my side. She was right. There were squatters living in Peregrine Hall, and they were no ordinary squatters. There seemed to be a lot of foreigners, too. I see. Who 
with your car? On the road, by the whole gate. I'll drive you there. You can look at the stuff on the way. Right. Is there a library around here? Just around the corner in Carisbrook Street. Right. Would you pick me up there, then? Sure. Who is Gerald Pike? My boss, the solicitor. Well, he seems to have bought several properties over the past few years and sold them a few months later at a huge profit. Through the same estate agents, Waterfields. Yeah, looks like Pike and Waterfield are in cahoots. But it's not a crime to make a profit. It would be a crime if Pike was Waterfield's nominee. If Waterfield was the real buyer and they shared the proceeds. I see. Well, Mr. Pike always keeps his filing cabinet locked, but I know where he keeps the key. Be careful, please. I could do it this morning. He has an appointment in Haywards Heath. He won't be back till 12. Just be careful. Shall I see you this evening? Okay. Spaghetti again? Lovely. 7.30? Vash Binden isn't a person, it's a, well, it's a, it's a thing. A thing? Yeah. It means disappearance. Yeah, that fits, because they have disappeared, haven't they? And I know why one of them is. Now, listen to this. Um, dear Monsieur Duclos, present yourself at 10 hundred hours on the date given below at the Bluebell Clinic, Madeleine Bryce Hill, where the surgical treatment arranged, where the surgical treatment has been arranged. Why would a letter to a Frenchman be written in German? And why should the booking come from Switzerland? I don't know. The date's the 15th. It was yesterday. something, Christine? The Fairfax contract, Mr. Pike. I thought it might be on your desk. Oh, sorry. I must be going blind. Joanna seemed to think it was. Really? She told Mr. Lofthouse who had received instructions about a year ago. But I can't find any record of it. Why is Mr. Lofthouse interested in Peregrine Hall? A friend of his told him about it. He said it sounded just what he was looking for. Leave it to me, Joyce. I'll make some inquiries. Very well, Mr. Waterfield. Hello. We need an emergency meeting. Trouble. Possibly. Can you make 6.30 tonight at the club? Will Oliver Thornton be there? Mr. Duclos. 
Mr. Duclos not allowed visitors yet. He's still recovering from his operation. Yeah, just a couple of minutes. You know, we've driven all the way from Penzance. I'm sorry. Mr. Thornton's orders. But I'll have those flowers taken up to him, if you like. Thank you. Well, there doesn't seem to be a card. Well, we had hoped to see him in person, you see. And... Well, if you'd like to leave your names, I'll see that he gets them. Just tell him we're from Penzance. He'll know who we are. Sorry. Um, we've come to see Mrs. Anstey. Which ward is she in, please? 17, that's on the second floor. Turn left out of the lift. Thank you. Thank you. Bluebell Clinic, how may I help you? Why Penzance? Why not? Sorry, we were just checking the You say this bloke tried to kill you? Yes, that's right. He had a gun. Now he'd like to be alive. And there's another thing. There's a chain on the fire exit. Now that's strictly against fire regulations. What led you to the clinic? Well, because we found this fax at Peregrine Hall. So? Well, it's telling Duclos to report to this clinic. But what's he got to do with Miss Draper's death? Well, she stumbled on some squatters up at the hall, and we think that Duclos was one of them. I thought you said she was making inquiries about Eric Waterfield. <laughs> and Gerald Pike, the solicitor. Now, Christine Draper received some documents this morning, which Joanna had deposited at the bank. Where are these documents? Well, Christine has them. And what do they prove? They prove that Pike and Waterfield are involved in some sort of property fraud. There's a big jump from property fraud to murder. Yes, that's why it's got to be that much heavier. What about this fax? Who's... Veshvinden. Uh, means disappearance. Yeah, one good way to make people disappear is to give them plastic surgery. Well, you've certainly given us a lot to think about. Good. I'll leave it to us. If I were you, I'd keep a low profile from now on. Thank you. What's on your mind? Well, I was just thinking about Tom Draper's phone call. Who? Well, you know the girl's father. Oh, yeah. I have to ask Christine if she's written to him. I just wish I'd taken him more seriously. In fact, he's silly right to me. There's one way we can easily find out. Yes, Guy, I'm all ears. 
No, I left the key in the usual place. You changed, sir. Yeah, could you see if there's any mail for Guy? Especially from abroad. All right. What's your number? It's Christine Draper. She's proving as tiresome as her sister. I thought you said she was harmless. She would have been. If it wasn't for those two friends of hers. Who are they? Apart from being a bloody nuisance. Our beloved leaders made inquiries. They're a couple of nobodies. They uh, visited one of my patients this afternoon. Unfortunately, his driver went berserk, so I had to pack them both off to France. Does that mean we have to return the money? I don't see why. I've performed the operation, and uh, he's in no position to sue us, is he? How much does the girl know, Gerald? Enough. She's been into my filing cabinet. to wait until those busybodies are out of the way. We can't afford to wait. And they'd go away if their trail went cold, wouldn't they? If their inquiries reached a dead end. No. It's too big a risk. We can't allow a lucrative business like this to go to the wall, Eric. I agree. We cleared 300,000 last year, and there's plenty more where that came from. We'd need the leader's approval. We already have it. I don't believe it was an accident. I think she was murdered. Why? Because she was getting too close. Just like her sister. I suppose those papers of Joanna's were destroyed. We certainly didn't find any. That's another reason why I don't think it was an accident. Maybe Christine deposited them back at the bank. No, no, she wouldn't have done that. We were going to have another look at them last night. Try and you know, piece it all together. 
The trouble is, Mr. McFadgen, we've got nothing to go on but your suspicions. There was no sign of a break-in. No evidence to suggest foul play. What about Duclos? According to Mr. Thornton, he was a French businessman who came to Britain for some plastic surgery. That bloke tried to kill us. He was Mr. Duclos's driver. He said he saw you in his master's room and thought you were trying to nick his money. Well, that's not so Or his passport. Anyway, he's obviously got another one because they flew back to France this morning. I've managed to get in touch with Tom Draper's office and the translocates him. I really don't know how I'm going to tell him. I should never have let her nose around in Pike's office. He must have found out. I mean, there's no sign of anybody breaking in. It must be somebody she knew. It doesn't make any sense. I suppose not. Well, suppose she did find some incriminating evidence. Why would she have opened the door? Perhaps she thought it was you. Maybe. Now these bloody documents have disappeared. We're back to square one. What do you think these foreigners are up to? I don't know. Maybe it's some EEC fraud. Oh, come on. I mean, that's hardly a motive for murder. Hang on a minute. According to those papers of Joanna's, Pike sold nearly every house he bought, but he's managed to hang on to two. Peregrine Hall and... Something place. It begins with a T or an R. That doesn't get us very far, does it? No. Wait a minute. Now, there's, there is one possibility we've never looked at. What's that? The lady who, who sold the hall. Mrs. Osgood. This is Osgood. That's right. Do have another scone, Mr. McFaddy, and they're homemade. Thank you very much. What about you, Mr. Lofthouse? Oh, uh, no thanks. I'm trying to lose weight. That's just what Miss Draper said. But in the end, she couldn't resist them. Come on, just one more. No, thank you, really. Such a charming girl. Such a terrible waste. Yes. So she came and asked you about Peregrine Hall? Yes. She thought I'd been cheated. No, Doc. No, stop it, Bramble. Go on, there's a good girl. I think you told her that you'd forgotten who had, in fact, bought the hall. That's right. But she found out it was a Mr. Pike. I know. I remember just a few days later. And it was a Mr. Waterfield who arranged the prize? Yes. How long was it on the market? Well, it never actually was on the market. Waterfields never had to advertise it at all, because Mr. Pike was so quick off the mark. Mr. Waterfield advised me to accept the offer because he said old properties were very difficult to sell. Isn't there another big house around here? Something place, beginning with T? Templewood? Mm. Just get off. Mm. Castle Dracula? Yeah, sort of place I keep meeting Maggie in my dreams. Did you bring the garlic? I thought you had it.
be awful if she wants to. Ooh. Maggie. Come in, sir. What are you all doing here? Where is your friend? I'm sure you did not come here alone. Yes, I did. I left him at the pub. If I'm not back in half an hour, he's going to call the police. To shoot him in the house. You have all that So you're German? We come from uh, East Europe. Some sort of terrorist group? Would be ridiculous. What do you know about Joanna Draper? It wasn't suicide, was it? It is no use to ask questions. And Christine? Her death wasn't an accident, was it? No more questions. Superintendent! We're in a lot of trouble here. They've got Guy. What? Where? He's upstairs. Show me.
Where's Mr. McFadgen? I'm Detective Superintendent Masters. These are private premises. Do you have the owner's authority to be here? Superintendent, thank God you're here. Hello, Mango. At once. This chap's got a gun. Give it to me. Give it to me. These people are illegal immigrants. We've been after them for some time. I shall want statements from you two as to your reasons for being here. And I don't want any more interference. Now, just a minute. There's more to it than that, you know. These men are involved in two murders. There's no possible connection. Now, let's move. I just want to please. Ah, here they are now. Thanks very much. Hello? Hello? Sarah, any news? Uh, yes, one letter arrived this morning. Joe wrote to me asking if I could find out about some British police officers who came out to advise the new regime about police methods. You remember the old guard had fled or were trying to work their passage? Yes. My friend in the Ministry of Interior here. Jack, put that down! Jack, Jack you're messing about. What? Messing about. Go on. He said there were three British. Named Simmons, Smith, and Masters. See, Masters. He remembers Masters because he became heavily involved with the remainder of the old yeah, guard. Yeah. But when Masters went home, he decided to forget it. Yeah. I've no idea if this means yeah. anything or what Joe thinks she is doing. I couldn't get through to her, so I phoned you. The squatters are all old pals of this from the secret yeah. police. Right. What? Is that it then? Yep, that's it. Is that it? Yep. Well, thanks very much, Sarah. Yes. Thank you. Thank Sarah. you very much. It's very bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Chief Inspector, just the man we want to see. Oh, yes, the super has asked me to take your statements. I have to tell you that I do not believe everything you say. None of it is only supposition. But I will institute a search of that house as soon as I can. Right, thanks very much. your statement. We can do that now. Your friends are all ex-secret policemen. 
They got you into a scheme to give them new identities. And I bet you've been paid a great deal of money. Go on. It all went wrong when Joanna Draper got too close. They killed her and got you to dispose of the body. That was your fatal mistake. And then Miss Christine. If anyone moves, I'll use this. The men I tried to help were professional police officers who served their country loyally and well. They didn't deserve the sort of treatment they got if they'd stayed back there. That's where you're wrong. They would have got everything they deserved. I'd better stay around the flat today. Tom Draper said he'd phone as soon as he organised the flight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, these are all circulars. Only £299. Ah, but you do save yourself £70. Pounds. This is amazing. There are no bills. We heard you come in. Here we go. Glad to see you're both back in one piece. Jack says he's very sorry, but there was a slight accident. He didn't mean to do it, but we bought a replacement. A replacement? But for the cockatoo over there when I was phoning. Oh, no, no, sir, you shouldn't have done that. I mean, it was... Look, it's... It's so much nicer. Good. That's all right, then. I'm glad you like it. We must fly tea, George, Rosanna, me and Tom. Oh, God, I nearly forgot. We took in some recorded delivery letters whilst you were away. Oh, thanks very much. See you soon. Come on, Pickle. Yeah, bye. Bye. Gas. Electricity. Oh, telephone. Well, there you are. Nothing you can do. Treat it like wash day. <laughs> <laughs>